Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I present a revised version of the Gagayan spacecraft based on information from the test and also from the comments. I have been told that there is a new version of the Gagayan spacecraft that's different from all the other images on, on the web. So I have endeavored to change the pod in certain ways to make it look a little bit more like it but more work could be done but first and most importantly we had an issue with the launch escape system sort of colliding with the vessel or not freeing itself properly so more in line with how it's supposed to be i've separated out into three pieces we've got the upper launch escape system and then two fairings that's really how it's ought to be so this is more in line with how it's supposed to separate. I also create a custom decoupler to ensure that the launch escape system is the proper height above everything else, otherwise things will not fit properly. Uh, the docking port is not mine, that's from CX Aerospace, and you can see the difference in the pod. Let's bring out the other pod. I, I retained both pods, so uh, if you like one more than the other, that's fine. Uh, no, I missed an A there. Okay, so the previous spacecraft was uh, taller, in fact, uh, let's see, but not wider, uh, just taller. Uh, so yeah, now this is, and we, we have to have two different aero caps, this one that fits this. Unfortunately, uh, this one doesn't fit the textures of this, I'll have to work on that. Uh, so yeah, but I don't know if I want to create a custom texture for this error cap. Uh, right now it's just sharing the same texture as that one. In order to fix this I'd have to have it use a different texture which just adds more stuff for the game to load initially so that's a little bit irritating. So I might not do that. And so there's the decoupler for the launch escape system. It actually without a docking port hovers over this and uh, this time I put six prongs because it seems like there's six-way symmetry uh, when they are constructing the pod. And then we have this, a different service module now because they have four solar panels. And this is a little bit complicated because, well, I think it's actually supposed to be six-way symmetry and so it's supposed to be a hexagon, not an octagon. But this is better for placing RCS thrusters for docking. And in the images that, uh, so in the comments somebody shared a presentation that uh, ISRO had uh, presented for the spacecraft. And the problem is the presentation slides had different images each time. And subtly different, but they weren't the same spacecraft exactly. So they're pretty inconsistent about what they're telling me here. Um, but I think it's a hexagon, but and the solar panels would be in an X, not in a cross like this. So I will probably make a new version of the service module like that. But just conceptually, what we need is RCS thrusters to handle translation. These at the bottom handle rotation, and so do the pod, though. These could be used for translation if we activate them early. So that might be a technique. But in general, you, you need just uh, two ports on each side of this. And uh, I'll just put a regular block just to show you. Uh, see, if we put them like this, uh, they won't damage the, arts, uh, the solar panels very much. And if you put them higher up, make sure the top port is blowing you know that way at an angle. Uh, you can get it pretty good for docking, right? I mean, you don't even need a top port if you're activating the RCS on the pod itself. If you're not activating the RCS on the pod itself, you do need the top port, though. So, the, uh, having it as an octagon makes that easier, but we, I could come up with a configuration. None of the slides showed the RCS configuration on the service module <laughs> or on the pod. Uh, they gave me no help on the RCS. So again, the umbilical, uh, which they also didn't show in the slides, um, can, sep uh, can sort of bend outward so that it can let the pod go. And I've been told that there are five engines, though the slides didn't show that very clearly either. So I put five engines at the bottom there. Okay, and I've made other adjustments. I retained the cylindrical decoupler for multiple reasons. And one is that really we can use these things for other pods. 
right? Uh, we, well, not the well, uh, even the heat shield maybe. But the size of this is not that different from a dragon capsule. As you can see, uh, the umbilical thing doesn't work very well, but the dragon capsule could could sort of make use of this. Uh, the service module if you wanted to. Uh, the dragon's own trunk is just a bunch of solar panels in an empty space. Uh, this would give it more delta V. It provides another 434. I was expecting about that much so. But this actually has more space. I've only used a tiny bit of space uh, for the fuel. Ev uh, I've set the volume available to 50% of the actual volume of this area. Uh, sorry, this, this volume. Uh, so there's a lot of space left over and if we decide to add all the fuel in uh, let me make sure that it's the fuel that's configured for this actually show tank UI yeah so we want that fuel so if we top it off and fill it up with fuel to the brim we can get 1700 meters per second so there's possibilities with this as far as having Dragon capture into orbit around the moon, for instance, and coming back. Right, this was the older service module model. Anyway, it's just a thought that I can use these service modules for various other pods, and so I don't mind making an array of them. So the old version of the spacecraft still exists, uh, so that would be built like I described in the previous video. It's got its own aero cap, it's got its own spacecraft uh, body, but they share the same service module decoupler, the same heat shield. Uh, they have different solar panels. The ones for the old version are angled out, and so they sort of start at an angle like that and then extend. So they have to be a little bit different. But yeah. All right, so given this, let's test this version out. Okay, so test of the improved Gagayan spacecraft and launch. I also modified the colliders on the adapter because it was difficult for the spacecraft to get free from the adapter before. So that's another change that I made, though that's a little bit more subtle. You can't really see that. I also modified the weights of everything. Hopefully we're a little bit closer to what where we ought to be. I made the taller spacecraft, the old version, a little bit heavier than this version. Not by much, but just a little bit, uh, which should make sense, of course. Okay, ignition of the core. And separation of the boosters. All right, all good. We'll wait until a hundred kilometers for the launch escape system separation. Just checking staging here. That's just for air resistance purposes, since I didn't fit the grid fins. Um, so it's supposed to have grid fins. Other mods have grid fins that you can slap on. Grid fins will be intensely annoying to model, so just use like Kerbal Reusability Expansion grid fins or something for your grid fin purposes. Okay, launch escape system set. So that happens nice and cleanly now, as you can see. Now, of course, with the previous service module, the adapter actually covered the solar panels, but there's no particular need for that. And this actually might uh, reduce the probability that they'll be hurt by the adapter. And end up broken in orbit. To be honest, in flight, the mismatch between the aero cap and the capsule doesn't show up that much. As far as the textures, text, texture lines, I mean. Alright, separation and ignition of the second stage. I'm not gonna test re-entry again. Uh, it's the same heat shield and the same mass, so I'm gonna assume the same results. It's just a matter of whether the spacecraft separates off of the adapter properly, whether the solar panels work, because there's a different solar panel part, and also the stuff 
on the service module ignites properly and has plumes and everything. Because again, uh, it's a separate part and it's, uh, the plumes are different. Well, they're supposed to be the same, but they're differently configured. Especially in this shorter format, I think this has potential for being a lunar pod. I mean, of course it needs a lunar rated heat shield, but I think our heat shield is already a lunar rated heat shield in this case. I don't know if the one they're actually making is. But it shouldn't be a very big heat shield loading. Uh, the pod in diameter is not that much smaller than a Dragon 2, but its mass is way less than a Dragon 2 or an Apollo spacecraft. Of course, Apollo was 4 meter diameter, but that's just a little bit more than this. So it should be able to come back from the moon. And that, coupled with the fact that it has a robust volume for a service module, does allow for some possibilities. But we would probably want not five of these current thrusters that we have on there right now, but rather a different center engine that is more powerful. And to be honest, looking at the Delta V of the GSLV Mark III rocket, uh, we don't have to do a whole lot more to get this over to the moon. I mean, we'll need to do some more. It's not going to be able to launch in a regular GSLV Mark III and get to the moon, but uh, uh, more updated. I'll take a look. I know that they have plans. They, everybody has plans. Everybody has things that they want to do. But uh, I'll take a look at what upgrades they have in mind and maybe some of those can turn this into a lunar system. However, the pod is only designed to carry people for seven days. That's what they've said. And that's not generally enough for a lunar mission, so there is that problem. And that's, you know, they have to certify everything to that you know, it's going to work for a certain amount of time. I don't think it's just a matter of supplies, you know. So, we'll see. Could be that they could change that up and increase how long it's expected to function. The fact that this is already a cryogenic upper stage really, really helps. And what would be nice is if it's paired with a cryogenic lower stage. Since they already have the facilities to handle cryogenics, that would be best. And that would certainly get, leave this with enough delta V to get to the moon, I think. But that requires a nice big cryogenic engine, and those are expensive. Also, a much larger core tank. Okay, we are in orbit 223 by 217. And let's see how separation works. That's very nice and clean, okay. Of course, this doesn't have as much of a body inside the adapter compared to the previous version, so there is that. Okay, so our RCS is enabled, so let's do some, uh, well, let's point towards the sun for the solar panels. Now again, right now our RCS configuration is not suited for docking because I have no idea what, how they're going to put the RCS on the service module. And I'll make a uh, X-shaped solar panel configuration and a hexagon service module soon. Ultimately, I want to make all the parts for a modern to futuristic career mode. One of the problems with RP-1, I feel, is I don't want to start in the 1950s again. So I want to make sure we have all the parts for a good career mode in realism overhaul with real solar system uh, so that we can start in the year 2000 or beyond and develop stuff like the service module or the pods. This seems like a good basic level pod, if you will. And so we could unlock this sort of thing and hopefully it'll work. All right, let's see if the engines work. I don't know about that puff that does initially. They do throttle a little bit, 
because uh, they're based on the Chandrayaan lander engines, which uh, I assumed for landing would need to throttle a little bit. Pressure fed engines, it shouldn't be too hard to get at least some throttling out of it. A lot of throttling is very difficult. Deeply throttling is a different matter, but... Anyway, so we've got that. It's got about 800 meters per second on its own. So, and again, we're not using all the volume here. We're using the same amount of propellant that the Chandrayaan-2 orbiter did. So I just put the same amount, of, the same propellant tanks in. And that's what we have right now. It's got much more volume available. But I didn't think it needed for low Earth orbit operations. This is already a lot of delta V. And uh, our mass is 7.6 tons. And we're not going to bring it all the way down, but I do want to verify, first of all, that that animation works out here, and what the mass of the pod is. So we're going to just separate. Uh, 4.558. Why are you so... No, we've got the docking port. Um, it's still more than I wanted. It's supposed to be 3.7-ish. Uh, it might be somewhat the fuel and the... Because it's uh, 3.7 dry, but... So 7.6 is right, but this service module is still too light. So this is 4.5, and let me just dump out the supplies here. 4.168, and without a docking port, 3.968, and how much are the parachutes? Okay, so without the parachutes, it's 3.7. So, dry and without the parachutes is 3.7. I guess it's close enough. It's pretty close. Now, if you don't understand the motivation for why I would really like to... And I'll see about other spacecraft that are being developed, too. But there's three people. Could potentially be used for a lunar mission. Apollo. This is the Apollo spacecraft. It's... It's not that big. I mean, uh, it's a little bit wider at the bottom. That's helpful. Um, the heat shield is sort of more rounded on this model, which is interesting. Uh, but it's four point, uh, sorry, 5.49 tons. I think that's dry, but I'm not sure. But it's heavier than the Gagayan spacecraft, and it's not that much volume. And that's because it's got a lot of old tech in there. It's... Uh, a lot of stuff is excessively heavy. And if we take a look at other stuff, the Dragon 2 spacecraft is is bigger. It's It's got the same base, you can see. It's not uh, bigger in diameter, it's just really, really tall. And But unfortunately, it has the launch escape system integrated into it, so it ends up 9.6 tons. So it's obscenely heavy, and it probably can't get back from the moon. Uh, it's probably not safe for it to come back from the moon if uh, but you know if they want to prove me wrong on that they can go ahead i nobody would be happier to see that than me if they prove me wrong on that so in terms of pods and then here's orion orion is 7.6 tons and orion is big orion is uh wider than all the others and so it's actually the safest to come back from like mars or something like that though um, we would have to see that exactly, uh, but, you know, it's got the least mass on a much larger surface area there. So these are our current pod options, and uh, again, the only ones I modeled are the Dragon and the, the Gagayan. This is from FASA, and that's from the uh, Space Launch System mod, but yeah. So I think it'd be worthwhile to have this pod. It's very light, and it could do lunar missions. And also, uh, though the umbilical doesn't quite work here, uh, this these service modules can work for more than one spacecraft. So I will produce those. All right, anyway, so that's my thought. And I hope you enjoy the mod. It'll be linked in the video description, the updated version. If you downloaded the previous version, you can just delete that and get this one or just overwrite. Either way will work fine. All right. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.